Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to get started. Thank you for being here today. Welcome to the 2019 Fall Meeting of the U.S. Bishops. My name is Chieko Noguchi, and I'm the Director of Public Affairs for the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. Joining me today is Bishop Michael Burbage of the Diocese of Arlington. Bishop Burbage is the chairman of the USCCB's Committee on Communications, and he'll be introducing our panelists today. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your work in leading the committee. I'd like to hand it over to you to introduce our panelists. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... It's on, I think. Thank you, Chico. Welcome to you also. Uh, Thank you. Your first conference. Uh, of course, you all know His Eminence Cardinal uh, Donardo, our president of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, who this morning delivered his uh, final address to his brother bishops as president of the conference. And we were grateful for his uh, words that he offered to us. And I'm sure you observed a, a thunderous applause from his brother bishops. Uh, thanking him for his leadership uh, these past uh, three years. And we also have with us today uh, Bishop Robert Reed, the Auxiliary Bishop of Boston, uh, President of the Catholic Television Network. Uh, Bishop Reed is also uh, a member of the Committee on Communications and has just returned. He's one of the bishops who has just returned from the uh, Limina visit. So we thought it would be a, a good opportunity to have someone, a bishop, uh, who has just recently uh, had that experience to be with us today. So uh, we thank you, you, all the members of the media, for your presence, uh, for being with us, and uh, we now open the uh, floor for your questions. Okay. Thank you, Your Excellency. We'll go ahead and open the floor to questions from members of the media. If you have a question, I would ask that you raise your hand or signal to me, and um, please note your name and your news organization along with your question. For the benefit of those who are joining us over our live stream broadcast, I would ask that you wait until someone from our staff can bring one of the mics over to you um, before you begin speaking. Um, okay, um, Michael Laughlin. Um, Michael O'Loughlin from America Magazine. Uh, a question for all three of you. Um, based on the address from the nuncio, as well as um, the proposed amendments to the voting guide uh, to the introductory letter, it appears that there's some uh, tension within the conference about how well the conference has been able to adopt Pope Francis's either uh, vision or priorities. And I'm wondering if you can comment on that. Is there still some disagreement about how the Pope's uh, vision has been received by the conference? I'll uh, start out by simply saying, I think that the, uh, uh, the finessing of these uh, priorities and plans for the future were an indication of how serious we take Pope Francis, and it wasn't a case of uh, uh, any kind of uh, dissent or difficulty. It was just making it more and more clear. Um, I think that was true behind the nuncio. The nuncio said, you know, let's step back. Let's take a look at what you do. Uh, are you do doing this as justly as you can? Why don't you pinpoint some things that he brought about the environment, for instance? Or I, I liked it about being a bridge builder. I was thinking of his bridge building and things of clergy. As you know, the Pope has spent, you know, he wrote a letter of priests. Uh, he's very interested that uh, we take care and good care of our priests. So on those matters, I don't see it so much that, that the bishops are opposed. I mean, it seems that we were together on it, but it's just spelling it out in much more detail. But I'll let others see. Yeah, so I, I would say, too, that uh, the priorities clearly reflect our embrace of our Holy Fathers. Uh, initiatives, the words that he has addressed to us. I think some practical suggestions uh, were offered also, uh, how these can be made more known uh, in our local churches, our diocese. One practical suggestion, even in our own strategic plans, uh, we embrace the goals and the objectives, but maybe we mention specifically uh, how they have come to us through the Holy Father. So I think the unity uh, was very clear uh, today. Certainly there's uh, an urgency about many issues in the church and in, in our life as Catholics at this particular moment. And so that urgency, um, as it should, creates a dialogue, which is a healthy thing. I experienced that at the Ad Limina last week in speaking with the members of the various dicasteries and also the Holy Father himself. So, you know, that urgency creates a dialogue, which sometimes creates tension, but that's a good and a positive thing, I think to have that conversation. Okay. Um, Carol Zimmerman. Hi, this is for Cardinal DiNardo. I'm Carol Zimmerman with Catholic News Service, and I spoke with you um, 
three years ago when you started your term and you said you were hopeful, and now um, the light at the end of the tunnel a little bit, do you still have, do you still have hope with, with everything you've been through the past three years, and even more so, do you have hope right now? Uh, obviously, I have hope. I, um, I, I, I put on a little addition to my talk at the end today using Holy St. Augustine, pray for us. Uh, a line of his about we're always beginning, it's the principle of beginning something is the brilliance of the human condition. And um, I went into this uh, role not knowing what would happen in the three years. I, I mean, I'd be not telling the truth if I told you that it wasn't a rough ride, because it was. But I was always hopeful, and I thought that we, we, we managed to do the rough ride, and so I'm leaving the job. Uh, whoever takes over, I think we're leaving it in a bishop of uh, competent hands. Uh, all the people I see on the list, and Archbishop Gomez are fine people. I think the conference can, uh, can move ahead. So I'm actually positive uh, about it. I, I did have what made matters a mess is, you know, I had that stroke uh, six or seven months ago, but I'm 85% through that, so I'm uh, doing well. Thank you very much for the question. Um, J.D. Flynn. Hi, J.D. Flynn, Catholic News Agency, and Chieko, welcome. It's great to have you here. Um, Eminence, this question is for you, too. Um, you guys, the conference has spent down a lot of its cash, and the bishops don't want to give you more cash. So what spe specifically, I mean, assuming that the, that the absent diocesan bishops don't pull through, what kind of cuts specifically does the conference actually have to make? What, what does it mean not to get this increased tax assessment, concretely and specifically? Um, I think, of course, they will pull through when we ask those absent bishops who are ordinary. So. <laughs> it's a neuralgic issue, and I can't say as much more because I'm not an, as on top of this as, let's say, Archbishop Schnur would be. Um, but uh, there's always a case or a question for uh, uh, our finances. Uh, I, I think the budget and finance people go through this with a a fine-tooth comb, you'd have to go to the administrative board where they, you know, we first do this, you know, and put it pretty intensely. I think they do a good job, and when they offer this uh, amount of uh, increase uh, after not doing it for this past year, I think uh, there's good reason for it. But you're, you're asking the original, uh, I look at these you know, spreadsheets and somebody explains at least some of the lines to me. I, I would, I would hedge on that because I'm just not as knowledgeable as I should be. But I think the bishops are a little worried because of the crises they face in their own diocese. And uh, it makes us on our toes. I'll say that much for them. They put us on our toes. We'll uh, have to go back and see what we can do. I don't know if you have anything, Bishop Burbage. Yeah, the, uh, if the assessment is not approved, but hope, hopefully it it's being considered by those bishops who were not present today, then obviously what you have to do what any organization would have to do is look at your priorities um, and look at individual offices. And without that increase, then we may have to adjust uh, some of those areas. Uh, but we're not at that point yet, so. Father Reese. Uh, Father Tom Reese from Religion News Service. Uh, Cardinal DiNardo, um, at the Synod on the Amazon, there was a, a sense of crisis in terms of global warming and the environment and the damage to the rainforest, um, that things have to be done now. Uh, do you, is there that same sense of crisis among the bishops here in terms of uh, global warming and the environment uh, and the need to do something now. Um, and how do you communicate that sense of crisis uh, to the Catholic people? I think that there is among the bishops a sense of its uh, radically growing importance. If I can say urgency immediately now, I'm not so sure, but there is a growing indication of its importance. Uh, in local dioceses, uh, we already have certain efforts underway to, uh, to practically look at the uh, results of uh, global warming and very, or climate change. Uh, I think within our priorities and plans, that matter is becoming more attentive all the time. So yes, is it happening? Yes. Uh, it may be a little slower than what some of those at the 
that the Amazon Synod uh, had, because their urgency is, as a regional synod, it's, it's very intense. But the Amazon, it, it affects other parts of the world in terms of climate. So um, my point is that I use the word, it's, it's significant and it's really important. If it's reached the word urgent yet, I would say that's, that's, that's still coming. Heidi? Thank you, I'm Heidi Schlum from the National Catholic Reporter. And just to follow up from Michael and maybe Father Reese's question um, about communion with the Pope, but also about the environment. For example, one way that was mentioned by the nuncio to show um, a communion with the Pope especially would be the implementation of Laudato Si. So could you speak at all to things that might be going on in your or other dioceses to implement that, maybe especially as we approach the fifth anniversary? Well, we think Laudato Si uh, is important, and the Holy Father is constantly reminding us, and I'm sure during the Ad Limina, he will be doing uh, some more of that. But in my local church, you know, we're, we've reconsidered things relative to uh, how we do construction. Um, in the, since the year 2006, in my archdiocese, I have dedicated 28 new churches, church buildings, because we're all growth. Now, when we first started them out, we had one way, but over the years, we've been putting in some aspects of uh, creativity, uh, even to the point of um, how we deal with the ceilings and all, and with the skylights, and uh, what's, this, what's the thing they put on? We're doing it a lot in Texas. Why can't I think of this? That's my stroke. Uh, of ways of getting heating and all, and we are much more aware now, and I think a lot of dioceses are like that, to tell you the truth, but we are much more aware of these matters, practically speaking, uh, and what we have to do uh, to be responsible agents. So I'll leave it at that. Do you have something? Okay. Uh, Dennis? I'm Dennis Sadowski, Catholic News Service. Uh, working on the gun issue, Cardinal Denar, I understand through the grapevine you really wanted to get something addressed on this agenda. Talk about your concerns that you have um, and what really prompted you to, the, the, to have the committee put some sort of report together here today. Well, the concern came to me from others uh, constantly talking about this as a problem. And, and, Urban areas of the violence. Houston is an urban area where there's violence, but uh, there are other areas where it's even more serious and significant. May I also add what I made a comment briefly at the end of that discussion? As you know, the international community is really worried about this. And, and it's one word uh, look at the banking industry. There's one word that has everybody nervous terrorism, and that's gun violence. And they use ways to get money. So uh, I think the relationship of um, financing and uh, the gun violence is pretty important um, in our culture. Uh, I feel bad for um, young people who are caught in, the, in this morass in going to school where you see this kind of thing happening. It's just, it's very distressing. And even in a state like Texas, which is, you know, pretty much pro-gun, the need for education on this is becoming more and more paramount. And Bishop uh, Michael Sis gave a beautiful uh, statement when the terrible stuff happened in his, in his diocese. So, no, it's an important issue and, and, and will continue to be important. I think Archbishop Chaput uh, made a very interesting uh, comment well taken about the, the need for a meeting of minds between those who live in, in rural areas and those who live in, in urban areas to uh, uh, perhaps come together and to be educated uh, by the, you know, the varying opinions and uh, come to a better understanding of the, some of the common sense need uh, to reform uh, and end gun violence. Common sense legislation would be so helpful. Yeah, which we always support, and we keep supporting that. Okay. We have time for two more questions. Um, I am uh, calling on um, Ed. Uh, 
Ed Condon Catholic News Agency. Your Eminence, there was a lot of coverage leading up to this session about um, Bishop Bransfield not being invited, or in fact being sort of disinvited. Is there any consideration in the conference for releasing the names of other bishops who might have been disinvited as a sort of trust building exercise with the faithful and showing that the protocols adopted in June are working? I, I have no answer now. Usually it's the local bishop, uh, the new bishop, who will uh, uh, contact me, write me in that sense. Uh, Bishop Bransfield was uh, the first uh, that we had. And I did a consultation of the administrative board, not a vote taking, but a consultation. It was a good one. And then I'm the one that then would make the decision, and I you know, invited him not to come. That's the way we do it. I don't know of any other right now. Okay. And the last question goes to Jack. Hi, Jack Jenkins with Religion News Service. Um, I know that it, technically the election year has already begun, um, but we're heading into it in earnest. And there's a conversation right here about a major policy concern with gun violence, and I know that you're also working on documents to talk about other ways, but both your address and another this morning mentioned political polarization as a significant issue affecting the nation and Catholics in the United States. So looking forward into this election year, when we're clearly concerned about political polarization, what do you see as the role of the Bishop's Conference in you know, this coming election season, given they've played major roles in past elections as well? Well, I'll do a brief entry and let uh, Bishop sure. Burridge take it. I mean, uh, the bishops in, its, in, our, in our magisterium of uh, doctrinal and social teaching, uh, we've always made it a year before an election to put out some kind of uh, 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 voter helps. That's what we're doing right now. And uh, ours is not to deal with persons, the candidates, right? We deal with the issues and we deal with what is we consider to be moral issues that all of whom are important, some of whom are more important at a given time than others. You know? and for us, we, we uh, put them out. There's always going to be something about violence, about immigrants, about uh, pro-life. Uh, so that's what we'll do. And I think we'll do the same thing for this election uh, as well. Bishop. Yeah, and the encouragement, uh, and by leading by example, encouraging our faithful uh, to bring their faith into the public arena, that is a sacred duty a sacred privilege, so we want to encourage their full participation uh, and to do so with, uh, with knowledge, uh, to know the issues, to know the positions of candidates, uh, and that's where we assist them. We never say this is who you vote for, but we say these are the issues here. Make sure you know how various candidates, uh, how they're speaking about those issues. There's always a consistency uh, with what we're saying. Uh, with the sacredness of all human life and the dignity of all persons. And all those issues come under uh, that big umbrella. And we say that not only are you going to be uh, citizens, you have to be faithful citizens, uh, you know, true to what we hold dear, our, our faith and our belief and morals and values. Um, and also I think that we can lead by example uh, of fostering true dialogue. Uh, that dialogue does allow uh, for people to engage you know, in, in conversations with these issues, that there'll be debate, there'll be disagreement, uh, but always with respect uh, for one another and to avoid uh, the name calling and the labeling. And so as bishops, we have to lead by example and we have to foster that spirit. Because as you said, uh, we are very much aware of the division and the harsh tones uh, that exist. And so we have to make sure that uh, while this uh, is certainly one of the most important endeavors, initiatives coming up for us as citizens this election year, that we carry it out uh, as faithful citizens and with respect for one another. I'm sorry, what outlet are you with? Can you please identify your outlet? I'm sorry, I'm with WBAL-TV, the local Baltimore uh, NBC station. Baltimore, the birthplace of American Catholicism. So, uh, But I, I cover Congress, and I cover uh, this conference when you come here twice a year. And I can't help but notice that both bodies say common sense gun legislation and, ca and call for more stability in, discourse, in this public discourse, especially online. And I know that's Publicly, but how can you make sure that 
You, 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 can go ahead. you really can't. We really can't, but we can exhibit it. We can be civil always and respectful uh, in our discourse ourselves as individuals, as a conference, but I don't know if we can dictate that, impress that upon people. Okay. I used at the end of my speech, God is courteous. Let us be courteous. You can't, you can't order that. You can't show it. And in showing it, uh, people might just pick it up. We hope we show it in our own churches and our faith community that it has a way of, uh, I'd like it, if you use this expression, I'd like it to be a good virus. No, be courteous. All right. Thank you, Your Eminence and Your Excellencies for your time this afternoon. We'll have another press briefing after the conclusion of the afternoon session. Thank you. Michael, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Thanks. Thank you. Good. Good job. Thank you.